This video discusses the Data Map, a powerful data analysis tool built into the Big Picture add-in. You are probably familiar with Excel's pivot tables for summarizing and breaking down data by categories. A Data Map is similar, but it is more graphical. It also has the ability to break down data by categories and summarize numeric data in these categories, but it displays the results graphically in a map. To illustrate data maps, I will use a Major League Baseball data set that contains the results of all 2014 games through August 20th, the time when this video was made. Actually, by the time you see this data set, it will have the results for the full 2014 season. There are three worksheets in the file. The first, the one you see here, lists the 30 teams, their leagues and divisions, their total runs scored, wins, losses, games played, and winning percentages, their locations, and two sets of hyperlinks to information about the teams. The second worksheet is used for data entry. It has a row for each game played. However, the data in this sheet aren't convenient for data maps that break down results by team because each row lists both teams in the game. Therefore, a fairly simple macro was written to transform the data in the second sheet to the third sheet, where there now is one row for each team in each game. That is, the third sheet contains a pair of rows for each game. I will discuss other parts of this third sheet shortly. I will now illustrate how to generate two data maps, the first fairly simple and the second slightly more complex. The first data map is based on the small data set in the first worksheet. When I click the Data Map button on the Big Picture ribbon, I get the Tab dialog box you see here. I have already filled it in, but I will go through the steps so that you can understand the ideas. The Definition tab lets you designate the data range. Then you can select the group topics you want, in this case, league and division. Group topics contain the categories you want to break the data down by. In this case, the data map will first break down by American and National Leagues, and then by the three divisions within each league. The End Topics tab lets you choose the data you want for summaries. The goal in this example is to produce a table for each division that will list the teams in that division along with their wins, losses, and winning percentage. The pound signs in the left margin indicate numeric fields where calculations can be made. I could also show other quantitative measures of games, such as the number of runs scored, but I won't do so here. I have specified that I want totals of wins and losses to be rolled up to the group topics. For example, this will show the total number of wins for the American League, not just the number of wins for each team in the league. It doesn't really make sense to roll up the winning percentage unless each team has played the same number of games, so I haven't checked that option. Finally, the end topics can be displayed in tables or as individual map topics. You can experiment with these options, but the tables option is usually the one you want. The pictures tab lets you add pictures to the map. In this case, there is a team logo picture file for each team in the folder specified. The pictures files match up with the teams because they have the same names. The markers tab lets you add other information to the map. In this case, I will add the locations of the teams as notes and one of the hyperlinks for team info to the end topics. The Filters tab lets you filter the data that the map will be based on. There are no filters for this first map, but I will illustrate filters in the second map. The Display tab indicates several generic properties of the map. Here I have accepted the defaults, as you will usually do. These settings provide a name for the map, they indicate that different levels will be colored differently, and they indicate that the map will be placed in a new worksheet in the same workbook as the data. Now I will click the Create Map button to generate the map.
you see the root topic, which summarizes all games. Of course, every game has a winner and a loser, so the total wins must equal the total losses. Next, you see the wins and losses broken down by league. I will expand the American League to see wins and losses broken down by the three divisions in this league. Finally, I will expand any division to see the requested table of end topics with a row for each team in that division. You can see the team logos, wins, losses, and winning percentages, team locations, and clickable hyperlinks. To see the usual team standings, I will double click the winning percentage column to sort them in descending order. If I double clicked again, they would appear in ascending order. Now I can expand any of the other topics to see information on their teams. Note that the single expand button on the big picture ribbon is highlighted. This indicates that when one topic is expanded, the others are collapsed. For the second map, I will use the much larger dataset on the third worksheet. Remember that there are two rows for each game on this sheet. For example, rows 2 and 3 correspond to the game between the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers, played at Arizona and won by Los Angeles by a score of 3 to 1. I have set up filter conditions in columns L and M so that a variety of maps can be generated. For example, they are currently set so that only the games through the end of July are analyzed, and the common opponent in all of these is the New York Yankees. The role setting means that both home and away games against the Yankees will be shown. These filter conditions are used to calculate the 0-1 filter variable in column J. Only rows with value 1 in this column will be included in the map. The data map dialog box is filled in very much like the one shown earlier. In the end topics tab, note that team refers to the team in column B. The filter condition implies that a given row will be included in the map only if the team in column I, that is, the opponent of the team in column B, is the Yankees. Note that I have included runs as an end topic. It would make sense to check its roll-up box, but for a variety I haven't done so here. There are only two other changes. First, there are no markers, although there could be, and second, there is now a filter. Only rows where the filter column, column J, is 1, will be analyzed. Now I will create the map. It takes a bit longer because it needs to process several thousand rows. Keep in mind that all of the numbers you see are results versus the Yankees. In particular, if I expand the American East division, there is no entry for the Yankees because they can't play themselves. Also, note that many of the teams in the National League hadn't yet played the Yankees by late August, so some topics are missing altogether. I will generate one more map of the second type by changing the filter conditions. Now the opponent will always be the Cincinnati Reds, and it will be for all games played so far, that is through August 20th. When I try to generate this map, Big Picture gives me the option of writing over the previous map or generating a map on a new worksheet. I'll choose the overwrite option.
Now you can see how everyone is fared against Cincinnati. Also, you can see in the leftmost topic that Cincinnati's record to this point is 61 wins and 66 losses. Yes, I said that correctly. Just remember that the numbers in this topic are for the opponents of Cincinnati. The opponents have won 66 and lost 61. In summary, Big Picture's data maps provide an alternative to pivot tables for breaking down and summarizing data. Both tools have their advantages, but there are times, such as when you are giving a corporate presentation, when you will prefer the graphical display of your data provided by a data map.